Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. On a Wednesday morning, you call it Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. I call it your midweek thriller. My name is Wally Scott. Welcome on the show. I have a guest on the show. I'll come back to her later. Yes, a lady. And of course, I'll tell you something about her that you guys don't know. She's a peculiar journalist. I'll tell you about that. Now, the Edo State Government has assured residents that the Edo 2020 National Sports Festival will not disrupt the academic calendar of primary and secondary schools in the state in any way. Mr. Osarodion Oge, who is the Secretary to the State Government, SSG, gave the assurance in a statement. Now, he urged residents to disregard information that was being circulated that the academic activities in the schools had been adjusted on account of the sports festival. The activities of the festival do not in any way affect the school calendar. Management of schools, both public and private, parents and pupils, are to adhere to the calendar early released, upon which they have been conducting the activities, and disregard any contrary information. He added the primary and secondary schools are to go on the Easter break on Friday, April 2nd, and resume on Tuesday, April 6th. The second term examination holds from April 26th to 29th. The schools are to go on vaccination, vacation on April 30th, and resume for third term on May the 10th. That's not my story today. This is my story this morning. And this, I don't know. Maybe I should read it first, and then you guys should get your opinion by yourself, you know? Now, athletes from Kogi State may be barred from participating in the 20th National Sports Festival in Edo State from April 2nd to April 14th. Now, the Edo State Deputy Governor, Philip Schwaibel, who doubles as the chairman of the local organizing committee, of the sports festival said athletes must take COVID-19 vaccines before arrival for the event. Now, Kogi State Governor Yahaya Bello, however, said he won't take the COVID-19 vaccine and would also not encourage residents of the state to take it. According to the Executive Director of National Primary Health Care Development Agency, Dr. Faisal Schwaib, all states except Kogi have, been delivered, have taken delivery of the COVID-19 Oxford AstraZeneca vaccines. Reacting the essay on media to the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, John Joshua Konji, said COVID-19 vaccination was compulsory for at least to be admitted into the festival. Meanwhile, at least and officials in the Edo State contingent for the festival will begin their COVID-19 vaccination on Wednesday, that's today, ahead of the competition. Now, my guest today, Odwanyo Ruth Hassan, Odwanyo Hassan, is not your regular journalist. She doesn't sit back at home or in her office and sit on a computer. She goes to all the stadiums across Nigeria to see for herself. Odun, good morning. Good morning, sir. Great to be here once more. People have called this different names, illiteracy, ignorance, different things. But how can a governor of a state say, I will not take the COVID-19 vaccine, I don't need it, and nobody in my state should take it at the expense of these athletes to Edo 2020? Hello, Odun. Hello. Hello, I Hello. can hear you. I can hear you. Can you come again, please? I said, the governor of Kogi State has said, I will not take the COVID-19 vaccine and I don't want anybody in my state to take it. The athletes from Kogi might be barred because they have refused to take the vaccine. Well, for me, we, we all know how the Kogi state governor is. We know how the controversies and the issues that surround the governor, but I wouldn't want, to go into, want us to go into that. But then, if you really don't want to take it as a governor, why not just allow the athletes? You're just responsible for them as a governor, not necessarily because you can speak for them or then you have to stop them from taking the vaccine. I mean, this vaccine, most people have taken, even I myself have taken it, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's quite safe and effective. Even the, uh, I think the NFL vice president has taken it. And if all the set of people have taken it, and it's, it's being said like this, effective and safe. Why would the governor allow, why would the, why would the governor de deny an athlete of an opportunity to show his, he or, his or herself to the world? I mean, it's, it's quite sad. And, and, and that's why we keep on saying we don't want government to interfere in our sports. This is one of the examples that we've been clamoring about. But in this age and time, Odun, I, 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 I hate to sound like I'm being disrespectful due to His Excellency. He's my personal person. I like him very much. But sometimes he makes some irrational decisions. How can a governor of a state insist and say, I don't need the COVID-19 vaccine. Nobody in my state needs it. In this year and time, when everybody say COVID is real? <laughs> you know, that I said is a very controversial governor, with all due respect to him. But then we know, I think we know his stance on this COVID-19 issue when it comes to Kogi uh, state governor. 
there was a time he said he didn't agree it was in the state and all of that so it has always been like that i, I saw it coming i knew he wasn't going to allow it but i never knew it would get to the extent of him saying the athletes shouldn't take the vaccine and he would deny them of attending it's just quite sad and i'm really hoping they can find a way around it and probably plead with him and just allow this these guys do whatever they want to do now moving forward now the other state government says it will not affect the academic calendar of the students secondary and primary in the school however i'm moving forward now how do you think edo will be able to actually ensure that the covid 19 pandemic does not spread in benin Ensure the vaccines are taken in due time. And we know the athletes from Edo will get their vaccines starting from today. How will they ensure strict comp um, compliance against COVID in Benin? I think first and for I think first and foremost they said they have to present their certificates of test. That is, every athlete should have gone through the test through the COVID nineteen test and and ensure most of them are negative before coming in for the festival. And now the vaccines are available. People are already taking it. So I think the measures, everything is in place. But I'm really hoping that the guidelines will be, in, in terms of the fans, because I don't know the number of fans that will be allowed in for the festival yet. I, I think that hasn't, that hasn't been concluded yet. But, but I'm thinking, the, I, I'm just hoping that they can really adhere add, add to all the guidelines of the COVID-19 so we don't fall into another pandemic. We just can't even afford that in Nigeria right now. Now, speaking from, from you as Odun now, not as um, generally, as Odun Ayo, would you say yeah. if you had your way, you would have let this um, festival go on, if you had your way? It's a two-way thing, actually. I would have said no, the festival shouldn't go on. But when you look at the amount of talent that will be on display at the festival, you just have to put yourself in the shoes of this athlete. And then maybe have a second thought that once the guidelines can and everything can be put in place, why not? Okay, y'all don't stay with us, don't go anywhere yet. Now, the Super Eagles coach, Gennot Roa, says he's satisfied with the Sestin Balogun Stadium Lagos Stoff, venue of the national team's final 2021 African Cup of Nations qualifiers against Lesotho on March 30th. The Eagles, with the exception of, okay, now, we have, we have a tweet this morning that says, Kilichi Inacho, they call him senior man, Kilili has finally joined the squad. He joined sometime last night. I was with the squad in the evening yesterday. He joined the squad sometime last night. Now, now the African qualifier against Benin Republic at the state Charles de Gaulle in Porto Novo will hold on Saturday. Now, on a wet turf, after a drizzle, the team engaged in several programs under the watchful eyes of the French German. And of course, we also had Sheyaki Wumi. Of course, he is the vice president NFF. He spoke about um, his optimism and the boys will do well, but you refuse to disclose their mode of transportation. I told it to everybody already. We are very happy about the pitch. It's, they had a good work on it. That's good. People forget that these boys themselves are Nigerians. They are disappointed, if not more disappointed than you and I. And they're determined to put that behind them. They saw it, they see it, and we should see it as a body in the office but they're determined that it won't happen, it won't recall, and I believe them. But will it be by air, by sea, by road? Uh, if you wish. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> now, the final statement he made there, we didn't show that. He said they will get there. He said you wish, and then he said you will, they will get there. He didn't say whether it was by air, by road, by or by sea. Now, um, Odun, let's come to you first off. Kelechi has finally arrived, so we have a full 24-man squad right now. And um, like we've always said, we are going to have no Nigerian-based player having a go in any of those games, love it or leave it. For how long will we do this for? Well, I, I think Raw can decide to shock us at this point. You can never be so sure. Do you think so? Do you think so? <laughs> yes, I think so. Okay. Looking at the caliber of players we have, I mean, talking from the home base uh, aspect, we have an exciting young player in Anayo Oluwala. And I believe Genero, I think Genero has seen one or two games. I think the Continental game against Rivers United, he saw him play and a few other games as well. And then he said he didn't pick this player based on his opinions alone. He actually consulted some people in the NFF, people like uh, Saliso Yusuf, people like Bogun. I, I'm, I'm just thinking, and I'm hoping it's going to shock us because I would really see, I would really love to see an home-based player 
starting or probably getting a few minutes of play in that in one of the two games. And then we have the goalkeeping aspect. If you look at the goalkeeping aspect, we have three goalkeepers in the squad now. If Maduka probably starts the first game, the, probably the second game or or the second half against Bene Republic, we can have the aim but goalkeeper. Why not? After all, Uzo is just coming back from a, long, a very long time injury. And I think he will need more time to get back to fitness and all that. So I think it, John Noble actually can actually have a shout at the goalkeeping department. I don't think he will shut them entirely out this time around. I'm thinking he's going to give them some time of play. I saw more of John Noble actually training with the team yesterday than even Uzo. He was more on the pitch training with them than Uzo, which means just somewhere along the line, you might be right. Noble might have a chance to actually have a go before even Uzo. That's why I said. That's why I said I won't. Be, I won't be surprised if Yaro gets to play him in one of those two games because Uzo is just returning from a very long time in injury and he will still need some time. Maduka, you can't have Maduka for both games. You need. We need to check out those players before the proper. Before, before he pop out after next year. So I think John Noble has a chance. And, you know, I'm so, so happy for this John Noble of a guy. He wasn't, the, he wasn't meant to be the first choice at, at, at A.M. by this season. He was actually the third choice. It was because Kai, uh, Kai already got injured and then the other goalkeeper as well was injured. And then he came in as, uh, as a cover-up for some games. And he did so excellently well. Luckily for him, I think he saw the game against... Rivers United in the continental game where he was actually very, very fantastic. So I think he's someone that is very, very reliable. I'm actually, I'm even happy that it wasn't a Zenwa that was brought in because we've always made a case for other goalkeepers in the league that we have better goalkeepers than his one. And I think that's what we have in John, John Lobo this time. So I'm looking at it that he's going to start one of those games. I, I don't think Maduka will be in good for both games. Okay, now um, let, let's look at it from this perspective. Now, um, I want to ask this question. I saw our squad yesterday and I was really very impressed. I'm very optimistic about this game. I saw a very up and going Victor Osime. It was really very pleasant, it was really, really cool. Kelechi has come now. Our strike yes. force is being competitive. Comp There's a large competition there. Our midfield super, Chukweze, Ndidi, the rest of them. I think we have a full squad here that can take on anyone, especially against a Benin Republic who are playing largely home based players. Yes. However, I want to believe that the African football is much, much more different than European football. It's much, much more rugged. And our boys are much butter boys. As well. Yeah, they don't want to break their legs. And these guys are home-based players who play in Benin Republic. They will play hard. They will play tough. And our boys don't want to get injured. Would that be a minus for us? I don't think so. Because if you... The boys are talking tough. And the spirit, the, the spirit in camp is actually very high, like you said. You know, they are very excited. Most of them are playing in, most of them will be, will be playing in Lagos for the very first time. And they're actually training in Lagos for the first time in about over 20 years already. So I don't think that will be their mindset right now. I, I listened to some of their, the media party they had yesterday. And most of them are quite optimistic and they, they, they are quite eager to, to, they are quite eager to, to, how, how do I put it? No, remembering their, the last disappointment they had back in Nigeria where they, when they came, the uh, Sierra Leoneans came back from four goal lead to draw the game four four. So I don't think they want to disappoint. I think they will go, they're, they're still going to put their heart into this game. I don't think that will be the case. There won't be any case. Though, you know, initially when the list came out, we some of us were of, of, were of the opinion that we should have used the probably used the local based players to prosecute this game. But since Gerard doesn't think that way, I think for me, they, they, they don't have that mindset right now. They are still, they, are, they just want to get this. You know, once we get the three points against Benin Republic, they can just come back home to play Lesotho in Lagos. It will just be a party party stuff. So they won't be, I don't think they have that mindset right now. Okay, now the Super Eagles will take on, um, um, but I, I saw the stadium. I don't know if you noticed when, when the cameraman actually took um, the empty seats. Now, where we don't know what exact amount. Some of us say it's 10,000 people will be allowed into the stadium, stadium on that day. Some yes, said, about 30,000 capacity. Some said, how many do we feasibly see watching that match against Lesotho? I didn't get the question. How many do we see? Do we feasibly, might we feasibly see on that day? How many thousands might we see that day? Uh, you know, this is... Are you talking about the game in Lagos or... In Lagos. Away in Lagos. to yes, Benin Okay, yes. the one against in Lagos... <laughs> 
I'm telling you, if not for the pandemic that is currently going on right now, I'm sure Lagos fans are ready to storm the stadium. You need but to have I'm seen, really hope that, It was training sorry. yesterday. You need to have seen the crowd yesterday. Training, no? Just the training yes. alone. So, uh, it's going to be very difficult to control these fans, but, but I know everything can be put in place. It's just about 30% of the regular capacity that will be allowed into the stadiums. And I don't know if the tickets are going to be sold yet. I, I only know about the journalist aspect, the journalists that will be coming into the stadium. I know they will be able to control it. This is Lagos. The fact the game is on TV actually, so we can just stay back at home and watch it. The fans, doesn't, they don't really have to come into the stadium and disturb the game. And you know Lagos fans, they can be very, very hostile. That's why I'm hoping they can get all the three points against the Republic away before coming back home. So they, they won't be, there will be less pressure on the team because they got fans, they can be very hostile when you're not playing well or when you're not playing convincingly. So they need to win and win convincingly away. But so they will just come back with the pressure will be less on this guy. They won't be so worried about the fans. Before I go to my next story, I do, I'm still on crowd control. I refuse to show this to the public here, but I know that uh, it was just training yesterday, but I still okay. saw, I have shots, but I won't do that. I have shots of people who actually went over the fence, under the fence, at Teslim. Just to try and get a glimpse of the Super Eagles players. That's the kind of respect Lagos fans have for the Super Eagles. They will do everything possible. Now, if they could go under the fence and over the fence for training, I'm trying to think of crowd control on the day of the match proper. Yes, we have, uh, uh, as I said, I know the NFL are putting so many things in place in terms of security and the kind of people that will control the crowd on that day. We are just be we'll be begging the fans to just please stay away. They can always they can watch this game on TV. After they've seen them in training yesterday, they'll probably still see them today. But then they can just please just we have to just plead with the fans to please stay away from the stadium. We we don't want SCAP to sanction us because they only gave us 30% of our regular capacity. So we wouldn't just want the fans. We don't want a case with, of of the one we had in Kanduna some time ago, that the, the, there was issue controlling the crowd. But this is Lagos. I think this is a, an, a very much more exposed city. So um, I, I just hope we coordinate ourselves on that day. Thank you very much. Please stay with us. We don't go anywhere yet, please. Now, Gareth Bale says he plans to return to Real Madrid next season after his loan at Tottenham ends. Wales captain Bale rejoined Spurs on a long season long loan in September. Was a year left on his Real Madrid contract, which expires in the summer of 2022. Bale, who is 31, is with Wales as they prepare for their opening World Cup qualifier away against Belgium today. No, it's no distraction for, for me coming into the Euros. I think the main reason I obviously came to Spurs this year was, was obviously I wanted to play football first and foremost, but going into Euros, I wanted to be match fit. So, um, yeah, the the... The original plan was only to, to do a season at Spurs and then, um, yeah, after the Euros, I still have a year left at Real Madrid and, um, yeah, as, as far as my plan obviously is to go back and, um, yeah, that's, that's as far as I've planned, to be honest. Yeah, I, I never, I, I always think when, when things aren't going too well at the club, it, it's nice to get away and uh, especially mentally get away from, from the club environment. So, um, yeah, definitely it, it can be a benefit. So, um, but yeah, the, the first thing we have to do now is focus on these, these uh, couple of games for Wales, which is which is very important for us. And um, yeah, then we, we forget club life and, and concentrate on this. Audi, before I come to you on Wales versus Belgium, Belgium will be hoping to forget their Euro 2016 quarterfinal defeat against Wales when they face the team again in a World Cup qualifying match today. The 3-1 loss to Gareth Bill's side sent the Red Devils home from the tournament in France. But manager Roberto Martinez brushed away the memory of the defeat at a news conference before team training yesterday. Good evening, coach. Hi, Christoph. In international football is about the moment, it's about adjusting, it's about adapting, it's about bringing new blood, new players, facing the opposition. We are well aware that this Welsh team uh, had a, a really good camp previously, but this is um, international football. I think the stats are just for, for the outside and the media and to prepare the game, but internally I don't think there is a lot of continuity or anything that it can affect the game tomorrow. First and foremost, it was important to be safe and then from that point on it's been a, a real, um, probably I would say routine work. I think now we're used to this sort of situation, so I don't like to speak about anything uh, that has been out of the uh, the normal in the last year, a lot of communication, following the regulations, uh, following the laws and following 
what the local governments establish, and that's the only way that we can keep everyone safe, but we're delighted that Romelu is here. Obviously, we, we, we play them a lot of times uh, before in, in uh, qualifications, and obviously the, the last one was the Euros one. That was obviously a, a tough one. But uh, the ones before, it, it also depends on the group. I remember that we play one game, the last one against them. We were already qualified as first, so it, it's less meaning. Uh, tomorrow is a really different stage again. Is the first game in, in, a, in a new qualifier, so it's different scenery, totally different players, and uh, it's just something new. It's nothing comparable that what would have happened in the past. Ask yourself. Odu, are you welcome back? Yeah. Now, Odu, Wales against Belgium. You cannot but undermine the fact that one of the most improved teams in the world is Belgium. Lukaku, Thorgan and Eden Hazard, Kevin De Bruyne, but they still lost against Wales. Who does Wales have? I thought Gareth Bale and Daniel James. But, they still lose but Lukaku and the rest of them say that we're coming back for revenge. We will beat Wales this time around. What do you think? It's just one of... You know, we usually say when the Giants are sleeping, then the, the other small teams can easily take over. I think this one, they are, they, are still, they are going to come all out. I mean, Belgium, they have all the Arsenal's in their squad to get these three points. And I think Lukaku has said it right. This revenge, this one is a revenge mission. And I I'm, I, I just, you mentioned that Eden Hazard, Eden Hazard is currently injured. But they have yeah. other players who, who, who can equally come up. His brother is there talking. Against, Sorry? Togan is the Togan, and he's a fantastic player too. Yes. That's why I said they have other players that can equally come up and just match up this match against this Will side. It, it, it's that the reverse game was just it was just a one of it happens once in a while. After all, we've seen some small things defeat some big teams in the world. But it doesn't mean those big teams are down and out. But I think they are going to get the the, the maximum points this time around. I am scared, Odu. Every year, year in, year out, maybe because Nigerians are used to watching the English Premier League, year in, year out, the English Three Lions bring out scary, a scary team. Very scary. And they go there and they don't do anything fantastic. Look at the team that's got everybody there, Harry Kane, Jamie Vardy. Everybody's there and they just, the, the team is scary when you see the list. But when they go to play, nothing. Uh, that, that, that has always been the story of the three Lions. But I think they disappointed a few of us in the last World Cup. We didn't give them any chance to get to the last uh, to the last four. They actually did that. So I think they're getting better all over the years. This is no longer the the the, 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 the England team that we usually... The, the, the names are actually scary, truly, like you said. But I think this time around, things are get, get at, at, Things are different, are quite different under Gary Sabi. He wouldn't invite any player that is not informed. He would invite players that are actually informed right now. So I think that this, for me, I trust in this very team compared to the previous ones. I saw a team list again this morning, and that one was really very scary. You know, I asked myself, when Nigeria goes to the World Cup and we see teams like this, it's over. Let's just say we're not playing again and we'll go back <laughs> up. I saw the Portuguese national team this morning, and I realized that in every position, there are three world-class players. Every position, yes, world-class. I saw it as well. <laughs> wow. Who can beat a team like that? I was, I was actually thinking in that line. I said, imagine Nigeria playing against this team and Raw with his very rigid, rigid tactics against this kind of squad. It's really, really going to be funny. But you know, football is not like that. It's a game of... It's a game you play out there on the pitch. Things might actually be different and it's going to be a different story at the end of the day. The Brazilian national team. I don't see what you look out for. There are so many new players from nowhere, coming from nowhere, who are in the Brazilian team that we are shall see Neymar, Neymar, Neymar. And we're not looking at other players who are just there, waiting for their own turn to turn into um, a Selecao and make it happen. There are so many teams breeding young players. And this is what Nigerians are saying. Bring the young players out. Even if we don't win, with time we will get to win. These teams are actually bringing players, young boys, Every day. Even in Africa, yeah, our very own I could devour and all that are bringing out small, small boys, Amad Diallo, Imayu, and all that from nowhere. But we are not doing that. We're looking for names, brands. For how long will we do that? Do you, uh, do you think we are not bringing out. Like who now? Like very who? young now. Who? 
Come on, Ina Chodi, are young. Hey, Vito Osime. They are very, very young. You know, years back, we in Acho wouldn't even be starting for the Super Eagles. We'll probably still have an Igalo in the team. But things are quite different. I think we have a young squad as well. So I wouldn't say we are different from the rest of the world. As, but we have a very, very young squad. Okay, now um, let's do this. Let me put you on the hot seat this morning. Okay. If you okay from Odu now, let me let you predict scoreline against the Republic in Porto Novo and against Lesotho at the testing by Luxembourg. Wow, I was thinking you were going to ask me to predict the probably 11 and not the scoreline because you know the super Eagles are not predictable. <laughs> I can just predict now, and they will, they, will, they will decide to disappoint every one of us. But I think for me, 2 1 in Benin Republic. I'll do some and once okay. That pressure is off us in Benin Republic. We have everything going for us coming back to Lagos. Then it's going to be a whitewash. I'll do, I just got um, something from a brother and a colleague right now, and it's breaking right now. We from, confirmed from some of the Super Eagles players that we heard they will be traveling by water. Wow. I don't know. I, what do you think about this? As in, I actually suspected that a few days ago, I saw the NFF president traveling on water. He was leading by example. He was trying to tell us that everything is safe on water. So for me, I think it's no big deal. If we can travel by water, if that's the easiest route they can think of, then we can only pray for their safety. We can only pray for... So how did we get here? Well, our super eagles will have to go to Bede Republic. Next door here, <laughs> that we can buy a road is less than three hours. From Badagri is less our than... Our roads are bad. Our roads are bad. And we don't want to put this... Whose fault is that now? Difficult. <laughs> so we have gotten to where we have to actually pray for our players to get there and come back by water. We have always prayed for them, please. Even Try. when they travel on here, we have always, always prayed for them. That was a, that was a letter no do. Thank you very much, for <laughs> Thank you very much, Jonathan, on the show. Thank you very much for always being here when I send, when I call you, and we hope I will call you again next much. time. We'll be here again. All right, thank you. I promise to call you after the Benin Republic and sort of battle, and see what you think about it so far. All right. Thank all right. you very much. That was Odwan Ruth the San. Like I said earlier, she's a lady with a small body, big engine. You know, she doesn't like to sit down in front of a computer and just type. No, she likes to go to the stadiums across Nigeria and watch by herself. I can assure you. Port Novo, if don't watch it, she'll be there. And of course, I'm sure Testing Balogun, she'll be there too. Thank you, my brother and colleague. You sent me this message. Breaking now. We hear the Super Eagles will be traveling by water tomorrow. So we'll pray for their safety to and fro, okay, on the river. Thank you very much, Plus Sports on Plus Sport Africa, Plus TV Africa, of course. I call this your midweek thriller. My name is Wally Scott. Join me same time tomorrow for another edition. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything. At least for your heart, do some sports.